right, hello. It is one o'clock. Um, uh, today's Tuesday. I am not actually wearing lipstick. That is just a filter. Because, <laughs> uh, I don't know, the only way that I could get the um, reverse image thing to work is if I put my own filter. And this was the only one that, see? <laughs> <laughs> that um didn't totally distort my face or put something stupid on my head so we went with uh, the fake lipstick <laughs> so um, so yeah I'm not I'm not trying to be too too fancy today um, so oh we're gonna continue with um, the camo I have a lot of there's just so much um, so again your zoos don't have money um, I'm not sure if Texas is opening up their zoos I don't I don't think they're they're doing it quite yet um, but they are opening up some stuff New Jersey uh, there's not gonna be any school till September if we're lucky um, so, I, I mean, I'll, I'll be doing this at least for a little bit, maybe through summer. I don't know. We'll see if uh, if the turnpike calls me back or not. And then um, I'm doing some out-school classes. I actually have two classes tomorrow. Um, I messed up on when that webinar on ticks was. It was actually today, but I was running, so I missed it. Yeah. So I'll probably be here uh, doing a class Wow, that is really distracting. <laughs> and I guess it airbrushed my face also. All right. I guess that's, you know, whatever. I just I just look like this. Um, so anyway, so uh, again, um, I worked at, we'll, we'll review all the zoos just so we know how many weeks I've been doing this. Um, so each week I pick a different zoo. Um, that I've worked at uh, again to support your local zoo you can always um, buy a brick buy a bench um, adopt an animal uh, Amazon wish list um, sometimes the actual uh, zoo website has their own wish list on the on on their site I think Staten Island used to do it that way um, or you could just call you know call the main line uh, and usually you know dial zero and Hopefully someone will pick up, ask what you can do to help. Um, or you can, you know, gift cards for the keepers, stuff like that. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Oh, you can do buy a membership for next year or, you know, a summer camp for next year. Not that they would do that, but I'm sure if you bought a summer camp for this year, it would, you know, go towards a different program or something like that. Um, some zoos have uh, the donation buttons up. I know Staten Island is doing some kind of meet and greet today. I don't know if they're charging or if it's they'll stick a donation button up there. Um, so there are things that you can do to support your local zoo. Again, keepers, <laughs> we don't get paid very much. Um, if they're getting paid at all, they might be working without a paycheck, um, but the animals still need to be fed. And this is really distracting. <laughs> um, so again, just to, I usually go over, uh, a place that I've worked at each week. So we started with Fossil Rim, then we went to Fort Worth, uh, then I went to Staten Island, then I went to Moody. Oh, then I had a week off. Let's see, then I went to TGR. So we're in our sixth week, right? Oh, I'm sorry, or is that seventh week? We're in our seventh week of classes and I haven't repeated a program yet. <laughs> um, all right, so again, continuing with, uh, so th this week, you know, again, is an off week. Um, after I quit TGR, I uh, wanted to do, um, try to work on a master's. <sighs> So I was doing that while just, you know, I, I wasn't really working. I was doing a lot of on volunteer stuff for um, 
the state forest for uh, a, a nature a nature center, uh, master naturalist, um, wildlife rehab, uh, Houston Museum. Um, so I was doing a lot, and then I was doing a lot with the uh, MDP, the Migratory uh, Dragonfly Partnership. I was doing a lot with that with Monarch Watch. Um, and then I started working again, so that was like in April, then, you know, around, I think, uh, Labor Day or something is when I uh, ended up getting a lot of jobs. Oh, I was working, I'm sorry, how can I forget, I was working at the Pavilion, the Pavilion is, um, that was my favorite job, I loved that job. That job, it was like working at PNC, um, if you're from New Jersey or uh, Camden, it's, um, the concert venue, you know, the main difference is that the one Cynthia Woods Mitchell Pavilion is a non-profit, which is very, hi Greg, which, this is not real, it's just a filter, okay, <laughs> it's just a filter, um, so I was working there, and uh, I did that for like four years, so I, I went to, you know, we didn't get paid very much, but they fed us, so we would get a meal, usually it was Chick-fil-A, and, uh, you know, you got paid minimum wage, and um, they would always put me in really cool situations because I wasn't, you know, I wasn't a kid, I guess. I was an older kid, um, so I would always be all the way up front, uh, working front security, or um, I'd be in the back, not backstage, but the back area letting all the, uh, the buses through, um, working with the crews a little bit, so that was, that was pretty neat. Um, and then I, I worked one, it was, it was like a warp tour or something like that. It was an all day festival. And uh, they needed girls because the girls that were going were wearing, you know, they come up with these contraptions. And one of them, she had on like this bra that had, um, a, uh, I guess it had a, a bladder to put liquor in. And uh, so I had to check her out. Yeah, it was just, it was very weird. And you couldn't touch anyone. You did, you did not frisk. You did not physically frisk people. They just had to, you know, basically frisk themselves. And, you know, so that that was good. I, I was, I, I think I worked that for like four years the whole time I was in Texas, um, up in the woodlands. When I worked at TGR, I worked there. So that was, I forgot about that gig. So yeah, I had four jobs <laughs> after I quit the zoo. Um, when I went back to work um, So yeah, I forgot about that job. That, that was a good job. I, I had a lot of fun doing that um, Saw a lot of shows met a lot of people um, ton of people and uh, You know, it's funny cuz you you get these instructions, you know It's a request from an artist like if you're working way up front and usually you're an escort you're show not you're showing you know uh, an usher uh, people where to sit or you're just doing a walkthrough to make sure people aren't being belligerent. Um, you have always had, and of all the concerts I've gone to, I've gone to hundreds, um, you know, in different states. This place had it, like, if, you, if an ambulance had a drive-through, they could. That's how, you know, that's how we cleared it. Um, so yeah, they ran it really well. I, re I really loved that job too, man. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, a little off track, so um, we're going to get back to uh, the cryptic coloration. Cryptic coloration, again, is basically camouflage. Um, it's just that, you know, just like mimicry, there has to be 50,000 different types of mimicry. With, um, with camouflage, there happens to be a billion different types of camouflage each Scientist has to have their own name attached to it. Um, so there's a lot. There's some that I don't even understand. I'm going to have to do some extra research. I, there's one that's, um, where is it? Side shading. It's like counter shading, but on the side. How we're talking about counter shading, you're looking down. This one's you're looking from the side, and it somehow obscures the shadow. I, then there's... Uh, yeah, there, there's some other weird ones. Um, and I, I don't have pictures for some of them because uh, I ran out of paper. I ran out of 4x6, so I'll have to get more 4x6. Um, so anyway, so we're going to get our board. That should be 
This should be dry. Ugh. All right, so I'll just grab a drink real quick. I wonder how this is gonna work. Oh, it still keeps it. That is just so weird. Anyway. So again, cryptic coloration, you're blending in with your environment, either because you're an active hunter or you are hiding hiding from, you know, a predator. Now I'm just gonna put camo. Okay, so uh, we went over counter shading yesterday. Um, and then they even, you know, put these in subcategories as, uh, you know, I don't even know what the categories are. General protective resemblance, special protective, re I just, ugh. It's just too much. All right, counter shading is when, you know, you have your animal like this with the, the white belly, the dark top, your penguins, your puffins and stuff. So that's top and bottom, all right, are basically two-toned. Um, and then we went into, uh, I think I'm just going to, oh, color matching color matching was see and then some of them you know they'll they'll say um because a lot of animals have multiple uh methods of camouflage so some have more dominant features and some are um you know secondary so they even divide it by dominant and secondary features <laughs> so um then we have one called color matching And I thought that would be like what the octopus does, but it's not. So color matching is um, what you would think of camouflage. You're blending in with the background of your environment. So very simply, we're just going to blending in. That would be, um, you know, your uh, your praying mantis. It has that dark color your uh, little leaf hopper, you know, something like that. It's, it's camouflage against a background. It's blending in your moths, your dark moths um, uh, against a tree. You know, the harvestman that I showed you yesterday. The gull is actually something else. We can have our modeled um, mallard, our duck, how she blends in. And then our horny toad, horn toad actually does a couple different ones. So we'll have to put this one to the side. Um, or you can have your, you know, your toad blends in with the environment. Color matching, camouflage. That's when we think of camouflage, that's when you think of the soldiers wearing the green or desert storm, they're wearing uh, the brown shades. And then um, I guess now it's, it's a little pixelated, their uniforms. Um, so that's your typical camouflage color matching to the background, okay? And it also gives like military, I took it off of Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah, I, I ran this morning, um, yeah, down to the high school. Yeah, I did, I did um, 10 miles, actually no, almost 11 today. Today was uh, workout Tuesday. Yeah, well, not working, so what else is there to do? Try to try to get in the doubles. But anyway, so yeah, that was this morning. So that's why today's is at 1 o'clock and not at 12. Um, so anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is a an increase in mileage this week. Yesterday, or last week, I didn't do as much mileage. All right, so we have counter shading, color matching. Um, oh, this one actually has its own name, mimesis, because we have to call stuff by names. Mime I'm guessing that's how it's pronounced. That sounds vaguely familiar to me, mimesis. <laughs> uh, so mimesis is 
um, resembling something else. So something, something else that I'm not even thinking about. If I'm a predator and I see a twig, but I'm not an herbivore, you know, I'm a predator. I'm, you know, I want to eat something, meat. And I see something that resembles a twig. That look, I, I'm not even going to think about it. It's just going to, or I see a leaf when I'm looking for, you know, a gazelle or something like that. Resembling, we'll say inanimate object. Inanimate, in, inanimate object. So that would be, um, we had a couple of these. So that would be your stick bugs. Um, I have so many pictures. There's Zuwadi. Ooh, that's a good one. So that would be uh, your leaf bugs, your stick bugs. Um, your, um, I'm trying to see what else. All right, your stick bugs. You know, it looks like a twig. Or you have the butterflies or moths that have the wings that resemble dead leaves. Um, your bird poop caterpillar. Who wants to eat bird poop? You know, so something that resembles, you have another leaf hopper, looks like a thorn. You know, who's gonna, who's gonna think twice about that? So, um, or the example they give orchid mantis uh, or flower mantis, those are like 50 bucks a pop. That's why I don't have them. Um, oh wait. It says by a predator, special release by a predator to avoid scaring off prey. Oh, I'm, oh, okay. There's two different. There's two different kinds. See, they even divide it by a predator using that tactic. So if the predator, again, that would be your orchid mantis or your flower mantis. It resembles a flower. Something comes up. Try tries to pollinate the flower, it gets eaten. All right, so your predator uses that tactic and then your prey animal uses that tactic. So your prey animal would be your bird poop ca uh, caterpillar. Whew, so compl comp uh, complicated. So we have counter shading, color matching, mimesis for predator and prey. And again, it doesn't really, hi, It's a filter because for, I already emailed um, Facebook because when I changed the mirror image to make it the right way, it puts on like the psychedelic filter. So the only way that I could fix that is if I put my own filter on. And this is the only filter that didn't totally distort my face. There was another one that wasn't as dramatic, but it made my nose just really weird. I was uncomfortable with it. Um, so this is the only filter that made it somewhat okay in order for me to get the mirror image. Um, unless you want to tell me how to fix that. Because if I go, see, I, I, I could, actually, I'm not even, I, there's just too many buttons here. All right, I'm not even gonna bother. So yeah, that was my problem. If you would have watched yesterday's video, you would have seen that. And I explained that I couldn't, so I, I couldn't use my board because it was in um, non-mirror non image. All right, so mimesis. Um, then we have the other one. Uh, there's a lot of dis disruption. And this is just camouflage. This is how men, they, they break up camouflage. This is how we broke up mimicry. They break up camouflage. So we have counter shading, color matching, mimesis, uh, disruptive coloration. Yeah. Well, again, that, that this is all I could, I could do. Um, so we have disruptive coloration. So disruptive coloration is somehow different than camouflage. <laughs> so, um, so basically, 
it not only hides the animal, but it breaks up the outline of the animal, if that makes any sense. All right. And the, the, the example that they give, I'm hoping I have a picture of him, which I don't think I do. Oh, I do, I do. The description or the example they give is this is my this was my guy at the last zoo I worked at this is a tawny frogmouth so basically if you have him against a tree he totally blends in or you can have an owl you know when they shut their eyes you you can't make out that outline so it has a pattern that totally blends in with um, with their background so again, somehow this is different regular color matching. <laughs> I'm going to have to look that up. Um, but they call it disruptive coloration. High contrast. High contrast coloration to break up the lines. All right. So somehow that's, that's different than camouflage. Um, Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> All right, resembling inanimate objects, blending in. So this one, you don't see the outline of the animal, okay? No outline of animal. Using contrasting lines, okay? And depending where you go, they'll give different examples. I think this one also used a frog that was white and brown. And it, so you, so the white blended in and all you saw was the brown. And, you know, the frog looked like, it, it looked like a little rectangle, you know, instead of like a frog. All right. So this one's kind of weird. I'm going to have to look this one up again. These two kind of confuse me, the color matching and the disruptive coloration. Um, but they but they used the tawny. Uh, I can't remember what his name was. He was really cool, though. You could feed him by hand. I actually have a video. There's a video on my, on my critter page with me feeding him um, mice. Such a good boy. He was a good eater. Um, okay. So counter shading, color matching, mimesis, disruptive coloration. Um, and then you have, uh, here's another disruptive one, disruptive eye masks. And the first thing I thought with disruptive eye masks was a raccoon, but it doesn't make any mention of, ra of a raccoon. All right. So this is mostly for, um, for prey animals. Okay. So what it means is that. I guess if you're back in the 80s when you had the makeup that went all the way across, you had the band, the black band that went all the way across your eyes, you're disguising where your eyes are because that's a, that's a vulnerable part of your body. That's where something's going to attack you where, you know, it's vulnerable. So you're going to disguise where your eyes are. So if you go down shore and you, you see uh, the killdeers, the birds that have the stripes on the chest, or the plovers, the young birds often have a stripe going across their eyes, okay? And that's the disguise where the eyes are. And I think I actually have, and then I also think of cheetahs, but that's something else. Um, but I guess cheetahs don't really, you know what? This might work too. Um, depending on how you want to say it, your Barbados sheep, your Barbados sheep. So it has, we know that, we, we know, because we know what goats look like. We know, what, we know what sheep look like, that the eyes are going to be on the side. But if you're just looking at it, you know, the eyes are a little disrupted because of that black pattern, right? You know, so it's not that it's going across, it's going up and down. So it actually makes it look like the eyes are up top instead of on the side a little bit. So that would be an example of your disruptive um, eye mask. The other example, which I think is somewhere else. Let me see. 
because the reason why you would want to do that is because when you're looking at, even though this bird is three and a half feet tall and has that model coloration, you still see the eye. The eye, the eye stands out, you know? So you want that eye to blend in, okay? You don't want to be able to see that eye. Where'd that duck go? And you can kind of see it with the duck, all right? So she, again, this would be, she has a couple different things here. She has a little bit of counter shading going on because this is lighter, it's modeled. It's a type of camouflage, the coloration. And then she has that, the eye blend, kind of masking the eye. Okay, then I think I have it over here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Nope. I had a picture of a gym spot. I'm gonna have to find that because I have the class. Um, we can use our bongo. So there's a lot of um, antelope that have an eye band. You have your Gemsbach, which is that typical ritual mask or the sable, um, the roan. Uh, there's some gazelles that have eye bands. So it disguises where the eyes are. This probably goes under different, a whole bunch of different types of coloration. Cause you have stripes, um, the belly is lighter, there's counter shading, the brown color blends in depending on the environment. There's horns there's the different patterns disguising where the eyes are so, so our bongo uses a whole bunch but that is what the disruptive eye mask is for it's for when the prey animal disguises where its eyes are to not get attacked and even with the, with that you can even break that down into more categories so it it, it keeps going what about our hog nose um, let me see if I have anyone else that has an eye band. Zuwadi, no. Looks like that's it for the eye band. So the disruptive eye mask. Um, prey animal has an eye band. I'm just gonna put hiding, hiding the eye. If that makes sense, okay. And again, you can have false eyes. That's under another category. <laughs> or you have your um, your your uh, your owl butterfly that has the false eyes on the wings. That's another category. But it probably also has disruptive eye mass. It probably has some kind of coloration on the front of it um, to disguise uh, where the eyes are. So you're not sure where, you know, what end to grab. And let's see, I think, eh, I don't know where the, the monarch is, the monarch caterpillar. All right, so again, you have something that resembles a butt right here. It's the same color as the head right here. All right, so you have this pattern. It kind of disrupts where the head is, that disrupts where the eyes are. And it also has this mimesis thing going on almost where it, you know, you have two ends. Even though it's not really inanimate, is this a head or is that the head? So it, there's different tactics that animals use and they often use more than one. Very, very, very confusing. All right, so counter shading, color matching, disruptive coloration. I'm gonna have to look at that more. The mimesis resembling something else. Disruptive eye masks. That one's kind of easy to understand. Um, all right, so let's get rid of that one. Oh my God, is it 1.30 already? <laughs> all right. Um, wow. All right, so it's 1.30. Uh, well, we did good. We got five. We got five done. And then, uh, you know, um, we'll go more into it. So, well, the counter shading we did the other day, 
but this just keeps going. So we're going to be here all week. Um, as far as tomorrow, I think I'm doing class tomorrow. I messed up on when the class I was supposed to take was. That was supposed to, I thought it was tomorrow. It was actually today, but I was not around to watch it. <laughs> My bad. And I'm teaching two, one or two additional classes tomorrow um, before, before here. Uh, throughout school so I have about six classes on out school now they keep I keep writing them they keep approving them so I have a zookeeper one how to be so you want to be a zookeeper yeah so you want to be poor um, I have a horns and antlers I have an all about roaches I have a butterflies and moths I have um, things that sting which I'm sure there's gonna be a billion questions on that stupid hornet again I keep seeing the posts again it's not that they're flying over here it's not that they're abandoning Asia and coming over here um, they're in shipping containers they're you know on a plane they're somehow getting they're, they're taking a ride over and it depends if they survive the hibernation because the, the queens will hibernate it depends on if they survive that you know if it uh, if it's, if it's going to um, be a long-term problem like our spotted spotted lanternfly again this is where your citizen science projects come in um, it's kind of like you know see something say something uh, it's one of those type of deals that again that's where your citizen science projects really come into um, you can see the importance of them if you see something that's not right. Then my brother comes yesterday. He's like, oh, it's four inches. No, no, no. Again, this is the United States. We don't like to use the metric system. They measure it in centimeters, four centimeters, not four inches. So four centimeters is, I can't do math. Um, it's a little bit bigger than two inches is what this hornet is. Um, Again, we know from my lessons that hornets have a, uh, a multi-use stinger. Um, it can sting you more than once because it is not barbed. And based on the size of that hornet, it packs a lot of venom. You get injected every single time. We know the disposition of most hornets, stripey things, striped thing, striped, <laughs> striped, wait, how did it go? Striped things striped striped things sting or something like that I was saying so um, we know this you bother one whole bunch come out if you have an allergy yeah you're gonna be in trouble because of how much uh, venom is injected into you so it's not that big of a deal and even in the bug forms um, they're saying that the one that they keep using the stock photo is not the correct picture is not the correct species that they're showing um, so yeah, there's a lot of false information and I keep seeing people from New Jersey post it in a panic it it's it's on the West Coast and there's like one or two of them like stop <sighs> so anyway um, all right so we're gonna continue with camouflage active coloration um, seasonal variation coloration disruptive this chromatophore stuff um, probably the rest of the week because uh, there's so much um, yeah depending on what you know what your resource is that they'll call it something different too um, so yeah there, there's a lot and again uh, I'll put my out school link up there um, if you know anyone that wants to take a class see what I'm offering and they're cheap I'm like five bucks seven bucks for the 30, 45 minute program. All right, and that's it. All right, thank you for tuning in. And this is a filter, okay? It's not, it's not trying to be fancy. If anyone knows how to correct that problem, um, when I go to hit mirror image, it puts on this psychedelic filter. <laughs> and the only way to stop it is if I add my own filter to it first and then go to mirror image. So if anyone knows how to fix that, please let me know. If not, I'm going to be wearing fake lipstick from here on in when I have to write on the board. All right, thank you.